Hey everyone, it's Ariel and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about some of the best healthy hair tips that will save your hair in 2022 because new year, new hair goals. Who's with me? So I wrote a list of around, I think, 10 hair tips and habits that you can add to your routine to keep your hair healthy and strong and growing and hopefully reach all of your hair goals this year. So we're just gonna get right into it. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already, and let's get to it. I'm just gonna take a sip of this first before it gets too cold. Okay, tip number one is finding a consistent routine. So for example, washing your hair every five days, doing scalp massages before every shampoo, deep conditioning once a week, limiting heat to once a month. Those are actually all things that I personally do. Um, and I find that as soon as I do something different from that routine and I like switch things up, let's say I used heat twice that month or I didn't deep condition, I just find that my hair doesn't look the same. It doesn't come out the same. It doesn't feel as healthy. So I definitely think there's benefits to having a consistent routine and just keeping your hair on a schedule so it kind of knows how to act, if that makes sense. But definitely finding a consistent routine and just sticking with it is definitely important. Your hair will definitely behave better if you do that. Tip number two is to wash warm and rinse cold. So you should always wash your hair with lukewarm water, which helps to open the cuticle and also helps to lift dirt and oil from your hair before you go in with any like cleanser or shampoo. And then when you rinse your hair after you do conditioner, you should use cold water because that seals the cuticle and locks in all of the moisture from your conditioner or your hair mask. So I always just try to remember wash warm, rinse cold. I feel like that's a good way to remember it. And you should never wash your hair with cold water because it can actually make your hair feel really dry and it's just not going to help to remove any of the buildup you might have on your hair. And conversely, if you wash your hair with water that's too hot, you could cause your hair a lot of damage and it's just not necessary for the water to be super hot. Lukewarm is definitely good enough. And again, if the water's too hot, your hair's just going to feel super dry and not hydrated at all after. So wash warm, rinse cold. Coffee break. Tip number three is to shampoo your roots only. So of course, shampooing and cleansing the scalp thoroughly is important, but your ends can get really dried out if you apply shampoo to them directly. So instead of applying shampoo to all of your hair, apply it to your scalp only. And once you rinse your hair, rinse the shampoo through your hair, the shampoo will run down through the mids and ends of your hair and it will cleanse the rest of your hair without drying it out. So always shampoo the roots only and the ends of your hair will get cleansed once you rinse that shampoo through your hair. Tip number four is to deep condition. Um, I feel like everybody can benefit from a deep conditioner. So whether you're doing it once a week, that's usually what I tend to do, or once a month, just depending on like your hair type and the state your hair's in. Um, there's so many different types of hair masks. I feel like everyone can benefit from one, whether it's for moisture or protein or even just for scalp health. I feel like it's just a really good habit to get into. And if you've never done it before, you can start slow. Like just try one once and then don't do it again for a month and just see how your hair feels. See what kind of changes you see. Um, and try different hair masks because again, there's so many different options out there. And speaking of conditioning, when I'm applying conditioner or deep conditioners, I apply it as if I'm putting in a ponytail. So I start kind of at the mids to ends and then work my way up slowly to the roots, but I don't really apply conditioner to my roots because it's just not really necessary. It's better for you to leave your roots open just so that they don't get clogged and like they can breathe. But yeah, apply it as if you're putting in a ponytail. So mids to ends first um, and yeah, deep condition regularly. <laughs> Tip number five is to switch up your hairstyle. So if you're someone who wears a high ponytail every day, stop. <laughs> don't wear the same hairstyle every single day because you're just putting pressure on the same strands over and over and over and you're just gonna cause like tension and breakage points so you don't want to do that instead of wearing the same hairstyle try alternating like one day you do a high ponytail then the next day you do a low bun and then the next day you wear your hair down so kind of alternate how you wear your hair every day so that you're not always putting tension on the same spots and potentially causing breakage and also try to avoid doing too many tight hairstyles so instead try to alternate between a tight sleek bun one day and then a loose messy bun the next just so that you're you're kind of switching things up and your hair is not getting tightened and pulled into the same style every single day 
Okay, tip number six. I'm guilty of this, but <laughs> tip number six is to clean your hairbrushes. I did this the other day and I was shocked at the... <laughs> there was one brush in particular I had that I couldn't believe how dirty and disgusting it was. I ha actually had to throw it away. Like I was like, this is not okay. So yeah, clean your hairbrushes. I will show you guys what I use. I'll insert a picture of it here. It works super well. I just splash a little bit of it in my sink with all my brushes and a little bit of water. Scrub them a little bit, rinse them, dry them. It's all good. But it's so important to make sure that you are keeping your brushes, even your hair tools and accessories, like keeping everything clean. Because if you think about it, if you're not cleaning your brush, like you're just brushing through like bacteria and dirt through your hair over and over again, every single time you brush your hair. So it's just not ideal. And not only cleaning them is important, but also replacing things when they're needing to be replaced. <laughs> Because again, my brush the other day, I was like, I, don't, I shouldn't even still have this. This is disgusting. I'll insert a little clip of it here because I took a video while I was cleaning my hairbrushes. <sighs> disgusting. So yeah, that is definitely a habit that we cannot bring into 2022. <laughs> Clean your hairbrushes. Tip number seven is sleeping on a satin pillowcase. This has made such a big difference for me. I used to wake up with so much frizz and i would have to spend so much time fixing and like trying to get my hair to look good again in the morning but ever since i switched to a satin pillowcase i don't have that anymore my hair often i wake up with my hair looking the same as it did the night before just because of how much the pillowcase protects my hair i seriously don't think i could live with that one <laughs> anymore so definitely recommend that um sleeping on a satin pillowcase Compared to like cotton or microfiber that can like draw moisture out of your hair and also your skin where silk doesn't. So definitely a good habit to get into. And another bonus with that is that they stay a lot cooler than a cotton pillow. So it's just, it's more comfortable. It's just better all around. Okay, I think we're on tip number eight. Tip number eight is oiling before shampooing. So I do this every single time I wash my hair. I've been doing it for probably like, I don't know, six to eight months, even maybe more than that. Um, but I've seen such a big difference in my hair since I started doing this. It grows a lot faster. It, it stays a lot more moisturized. So basically what I do is just take a little bit of oil. I like to use either Argan or Jojoba. Those are usually my two favorites. Um, just put a little bit in my hands, massage it into my scalp and also, um, into the ends and like the rest of my hair. And then I'll usually leave it in like overnight if I can or as little as 30 minutes just to infuse my hair with a little extra moisture and hydration before I go in and shampoo. And again, it just helps my hair stay so much so much more moisturized and it just feels so much healthier when I do this. It also encourages hair growth and I definitely have seen a big difference in how fast my hair grows since doing this. So get into that habit. Okay, tip number nine, I think, um, using heat protectant. This is so important i cannot stress it enough i've talked about this so much on my channel but anytime you are about to apply direct heat to your hair you need to make sure you're using heat protectant and i always say if there's one product that you're going to use and that's it make it heat protectant because if you're applying direct heat to your hair you are going to cause damage and when you use a heat protectant it basically creates a barrier between your hair and the heat that you're using so it doesn't it's not nearly as harsh and it prevents damage which is obviously very important and again there's so many different options out there for heat protectants just like hair masks or any other hair products but some heat protectants also have other benefits like they can add more moisture shine body volume like all kinds of things so look around find one that you think would be best for your hair but definitely make sure you're using heat protectant please okay tip number 10 is to find the right haircut and style so for example if you have really long thick hair with layers and all this stuff bangs all of it and it requires you to spend 30 minutes every morning styling it and just putting effort into it but you don't have that much time in the morning or you're just not a morning person you don't you don't like that um, you're gonna probably get frustrated with that or if you know your hair doesn't do well with heat but this hairstyle that you have requires a certain amount of heat for you to use for it to look the way you want you're also going to get frustrated so i think when you're getting a certain haircut or style your lifestyle and the amount of time and like maintenance you want to put into it should definitely be considered and i think it'll just save you a lot of headaches and frustration and even damage like because if you're styling certain parts of your hair like excessively to try to get it to look a certain way but you like d it's just not working or you don't know how to style a certain piece a certain way 
it's just not it's not ideal so definitely finding the right cut and style that works for you and your lifestyle is very important and lastly tip number 11 is to use what works for your hair so i think that a lot of times we hear so many people say like never use sulfates don't use silicones this product is bad this one is good like there's so many rules it seems to what products you can and cannot use but the truth is everybody's hair is different and what works for you may not work for the next person and vice versa so so i think it's definitely important to experiment over time with different products and even techniques that work for your hair um and if sulfates work well for your hair then go ahead and use sulfates like it's fine for me personally i know that my hair works usually pretty well with silicones especially if i'm about to heat style my hair so i know that when i'm gonna use heat on my hair i'm okay to use silicones because i'm probably gonna get better results that way but then for somebody else that might be the worst thing for their hair so it just really depends on the person and your hair and kind of like what look you're going for and so many things so don't listen to what the rules are just focus on what works for you and what products you've seen the best results with and just use that <laughs> All right, you guys, so those are all of my tips for today. Those are some of the best healthy hair habits that I think you can add to your routine this year to reach your hair goals. And I think a lot of these really can save your hair. I think a lot of what it comes down to when you're perfecting your hair care routine is just trial and error and figuring out what products and techniques work for you because again, everybody's hair is different. But I know that a lot of these tips work. They are tried and true. I practice almost all of them myself. So I know they work. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it helpful in some way. If you did, please make sure to like, comment down below, and also subscribe if you're not already. And hit the notification bell as well so you get notified every time I post. Also, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you guys aren't already. I will leave them on the screen here. It's at Style by Ariel on both platforms. But yeah, that is it for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.